600 milligrams of this antioxidant to cut creatinine in half. Catherine here, I have big news for you today. It's official. Science says that antioxidants can be used to improve kidney function. Now, this is really huge and it will absolutely change the way kidney disease is treated. Today, antioxidants are one of the biggest frontiers of kidney disease treatment, all right? There are new studies being published regularly. And while we all believed for a long time that, well, antioxidants can make a difference, today this is no more just an opinion. It's a confirmed fact. You see, the 2nd of November of this year, a very large meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials was published on the Cochrane Library. And when I say very large, I mean it. This review was conducted on 95 studies, 10,468 patients, and these studies tested 49 different antioxidants. It's basically like saying that what they found out is a proven fact, right? No take backsies. And they came to an amazing discovery. What they concluded is that in adults with chronic kidney disease, antioxidants did not reduce the risk of death but probably reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease and kidney failure and improve kidney function. So less risk of cardiovascular disease, less risk of dialysis and improved kidney function. Just by taking some extra vitamins and supplements? I mean, this sounds too good to be true, right? So I know what many of you will ask, are antioxidants really proven to improve kidney function? Well, truth is, when the Cochrane Library publishes a study conducted on a number of test subjects this big and with conclusions this significant, it means that something big is going to happen in the medical field. And yes, what they say about antioxidants is true. It means that now doctors and nephrologists are supposed to take action on these findings, all right? Because you see, a few years ago, I was showing you another meat analysis published on the Cochrane Library. Those of you who have been following me here for some years maybe still remember about that. It was about the low protein diet. And just after this review came out, following a low protein diet became the rule for anyone with kidney disease. So what I believe is that in a few years, I hope not decades, however, doctors will begin to prescribe antioxidant therapies to every single kidney disease patient. But you see, we all know how slow the medical world is. And if we just wait for our doctors to come out and tell us, yeah, take these vitamins and these supplements, we could really be waiting a long time. So why don't we just dig a bit deeper into this and find out which antioxidants work better for kidney health? So which antioxidants are best for kidney health? There are basically two types of antioxidants we can benefit from, vitamins and non-vitamins. We will see both today. Now my recommendation here and I'll tell you from the beginning is going to be to take as many antioxidants as possible but in low doses, all right? Just like they are naturally present in nature. You see, science is very clear on this. Antioxidants work best if they are in combination with each other, but we will also see which antioxidants in particular are the most effective, so you can also focus on those. In particular, as you may have seen in my thumbnail, one antioxidant molecule was used in a study to obtain a huge drop in creatinine levels, a drop of 50%. That will mean that someone in stage 5 will be able to get back in stage 3. I mean, is that even possible? 
Enzymes and antioxidants work best in combination. Let's start with the foods that contain them naturally. So, if you want to protect and improve your kidney function, consider adding to your diet foods such as pomegranate. I love pomegranates and they are in season right now. This fruit is so full of antioxidants, vitamins and phytochemicals that just eating it in small amounts daily can positively impact the health of people with kidney problems. Now also keep in mind that most fruits contain the most antioxidants in those parts we usually discard. In the case of the pomegranate, the white bitter pith you see here is where you will find most of the antioxidants. Don't discard it. If you don't like the taste, use it in a smoothie. And also consider red cabbage. All cabbages are great additions to a well-planned kidney diet. They are high in fiber and low in calories, can be used in many healthy and tasty dishes. But the red cabbage is richer in antioxidants, making it even healthier. And don't forget red grapes. They are also in season right now and extremely healthy and delicious. Red grapes in particular are full of powerful antioxidants called anthocyanins which are linked to controlling blood pressure, reducing damage to blood vessels and protecting against heart disease. Pecans are another little known source of antioxidant. They were actually tested on people suffering from high cholesterol and what researchers found out is that these healthy nuts do not only improve cholesterol levels, they can also raise serum antioxidant levels. Just like berries in general, but everyone knows that. And also, artichokes. Yeah, did you know that artichokes are extremely rich in antioxidants? You see, this superfood is especially rich in the antioxidant known as chlorogenic acid, same as what you will get from coffee. Research tells us that this antioxidant is especially effective against type 2 diabetes and heart disease. And guys, if you think this info is useful, please give this video a like and let me know your thoughts down in comment section. And these foods are powerful when it comes to protecting the kidneys. They can be a great part of a long-term kidney-friendly diet, but you can only get limited amounts of antioxidants from foods in general. Yes, what many people don't know is that we get way more antioxidants from beverages such as tea and coffee than any food. Yes, this may come as a surprise, but coffee is a better antioxidant source than any superfood including pomegranate, for example. And this is a proven fact. Now, I don't really recommend drinking any more coffee than you already do, by the way. In fact, for many people, decreasing caffeine intake, especially in the afternoon or evening, may be a way to protect the kidneys. What can you do instead? Well, drink green tea. Green tea has way less caffeine than both black tea and coffee, but a comparable amount of antioxidants. Yes, this cup of tea may be a better ally in your battle against kidney disease than most people realize. And there are a few extra tips you can use to increase your antioxidant intake naturally. First of all, eat the peel. Whenever possible, leave the skins on fruit and vegetables. They often contain higher levels of nutrients than the pulp, including vitamins, antioxidants, and fiber. And don't forget to take time for some tea. As I was saying, both coffee and tea have high levels of antioxidants, but tea, especially green tea, has high antioxidant levels and low caffeine content. And also, eat legumes. Many kidney patients are still being told to avoid legumes, but these foods are very rich in antioxidants. Some are also low enough in phosphorus and protein to be part of a renal diet. I especially recommend string beans and soybeans. Just make sure you are not getting too much protein from them. Another great strategy is to add colors to your plate. Not many people know this, but many of the foods rich in antioxidants are blue, red, orange, or black. And there are tons of different antioxidants that can help you. So the best way to get more of them is adding many colorful fruit and veggies to your diet. Yes, variety in your diet may be key to a better kidney health. One last tip, don't forget about seeds. Seeds can add a great flavor to your salads and recipes and they provide healthy fats as well as beneficial antioxidants. 
There is one seed in particular that may have way more health benefits for the kidneys than most people give it credit for. I'm talking about sunflower seeds. Yeah, this is a really underrated superfood. Just one ounce of these seeds contains up to the 66% of your daily value for vitamin E. Why is this important? As I was saying in the beginning of the video, there are two types of antioxidants, vitamins and non-vitamins. Antioxidant vitamins are vitamin A, C and E. Non-vitamins include compounds such as glutathione, coenzyme Q10, lipoic acid, flavonoids, polyphenols and more. Now you could, in theory, supplement many of these, but not vitamin E. Vitamin E is not a vitamin that's usually recommended to supplement to those with CAD. This is because vitamin E is a fat-soluble vitamin and that means that if supplemented in too large doses, it can accumulate and that's bad. But vitamin E is extremely powerful as an antioxidant, so powerful that a recent meta-analysis carefully reviewed several placebo-controlled studies conducted on kidney disease patients and demonstrated that vitamin E can reduce markers of oxidative stress, decrease proteinuria, and most important, marker of kidney damage, lower the risk for cardiovascular disease, the number one cause of death, and more. And a different study conducted on 59 diabetic kidney disease patients in stage 3, those administered 400 mg of vitamin E, had a significant reduction of creatinine levels and a significant improvement in GFR. So yeah, if you are going to start an antioxidant therapy, which today is something everyone with kidney disease should be doing, also consider adding vitamin E. But depending on your stage of kidney disease and on your diabetic status, you may want to be careful with the dose for vitamin E. I don't actually recommend supplementing this vitamin to CKD patients in the advanced stages until we get more studies about it. So while an antioxidant therapy containing vitamin E may be extremely effective as these studies show, as for today, I will focus more on sunflower seeds and less on supplements when it comes to vitamin E. Remember that small doses of many antioxidants are better than bigger doses of single antioxidants. Now question, what about the other vitamins with antioxidant properties? Just like vitamin E, vitamin A is not something I would generally recommend. Vitamin C is different though. This is not just one of the most powerful antioxidants in nature, it's also a water-soluble vitamin, meaning that the risk of it accumulating is low. And studies show that consuming more vitamin C can increase your blood antioxidant levels by up to 30%, which is a very effective way of helping kidney function. This vitamin, when in high enough concentrations, can neutralize free radical molecules which in excess can damage cells inside the kidneys. Vitamin C is also crucial for iron absorption and to fight anemia, and it also plays a key role in wound healing, bone and tooth formation and heart health. But you see, when it comes to vitamin C, it is still better to take in moderate amounts, 60 to 100 milligrams of ascorbic acid per day is what is usually recommended to people with kidney problems. And now you may ask, and what about non-vitamin antioxidants? What are the most powerful? Well, probably the single most powerful antioxidant out there when it comes to kidney health is and acetyl sustain or NAC in short. This is the molecule that was used to lower creatinine by 50% in an in vitro study, which helped to prove that NAC is one of the most powerful antioxidants on earth with incredible kidney protecting benefits. NAC is also used in people suffering from kidney disease when they need to do a contrast x-rays exam because it protects the kidneys from the oxidative stress these exams cause. But why is it so powerful? NAC is necessary to make and replenish glutathione, one of your body's most important antioxidants. Researchers have found links between low levels of this antioxidant and various diseases, kidney problems included. You see, toxin exposure, poor diet, chronic diseases, infection, and stress can seriously lower the levels in your body of this powerful antioxidant. 
getting these levels back to normal can have a kidney restoring effect, according to studies. This is because it's incredibly powerful at preventing oxidative damage inside the kidneys. Now the interesting part. Today, NAC is regularly available as a supplement and many people take it mainly to protect their kidneys and their liver. And yes, I would seriously consider NAC as a part of an antioxidant therapy to protect the kidneys. Commonly used doses are 600 to 1800 milligrams of NAC per day. NAC is most effective when consumed on an empty stomach. What you should know before taking it is that it may elevate the amount of zinc released in the urine. This is why those intending to supplement NAC long term should also consider supplementing zinc. As usual, consult your doctor before taking any new supplement. Up next, the only antioxidant that was used to get CKD patients out of dialysis. Okay, there is just another supplement I would also consider as a part of an antioxidant therapy to protect the kidneys. This one comes with properties even more incredible than those of NAC. This molecule is extremely powerful at protecting the kidneys from oxidative damage. And I believe that in the future, it will be recommended by doctors to kidney patients in general. I'm talking about coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. This is one of the most incredible antioxidants out there and it should definitely be on your short list of supplements to use regularly. And I recommend Coquitan especially to people taking a stun or a beta blocker or in general to those over 50. This is because taking stuns or beta blockers or being over 50 will make your natural production of Coquitan decrease. Now, the most incredible part about CoQ10 is that it was actually used in dialysis patients as a way to stop dialysis. I know this sounds incredible, but it really happened. And as we can see here, it worked. So if you want to know more about Kakitan, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.